Let me show you this, uh, Jonathan Turley. He calls uh, Alvin Bragg's uh, case a Frankenstein case. Watch. Is this one in court? Well, there's a novel question, John. I'm not <laughs> sure. I mean, this is a Frankenstein case. They took a dead misdemeanor. They attached it to a dead alleged federal felony and zapped it back into life. So uh, many of us are just uh, amazed to watch this actually walk into court because it's not a recognizable crime that any of us have seen. This, it does not appear to be a federal crime, but that's the theory that Bragg is using. So the, to, to go into the Wayback Machine, this <laughs> state misdemeanor uh, died because of the sexual limitations. Then what Bragg said was, well, I'm going to allege that you did false filings on business records to hide a, a, a crime, but he was very ambiguous what that crime might be. He still is ambiguous, but it is assumed to be a federal election crime. The problem is the federal government doesn't view it as a crime. They decided not to prosecute, and most election experts say that this is the type of thing that's failed in the past. So this bizarre indictment is now going to be an equally bizarre trial, and to, to this day, there's some confusion as to Bragg's actual theory as to what was the exact crime that Trump was hiding from all this. Okay, it, it just gets more bizarre as time goes by. Let me read you what Lou Dobbs said. He says, what a disgusting, massively corrupt judiciary in New York. Donald Trump hush money case. More than 50 of the first 96 jurors are dismissed after admitting they can't be impartial in the former president's criminal case. Pastor Hank, those are just the ones that were being honest and saying, we can't be impartial, we don't like the guy. Well, you can see, it, this is an outrage. And first and foremost, they want this to hurt President Trump on a personal level. That's why you can see the whole graduation thing, which is an outrage. The second thing is they want it to hurt in his pocketbook. But here's really what the liberals are trying to do, including this corrupt judge, is they really want to create a narrative, just like the fake news has been doing since 2020, trying to convince the American people and the world about, how about this, that there was no election integrity issue of 2020, but what they're trying to do with President Trump, they're trying to make him look like he's a criminal. And we should know from the example of the fake news and all the things that wound up being true, and that was this, there was no uh, Russia collusion of Trump. There was no, you know, the, remember the fake dossier, the Mueller report that was stacked with a bunch of pages and documents and millions and millions of taxpayer dollar, and it proved out to be nothing. And President Trump was cleared. So what does this mean going forward? They're trying another round to get people like you that are watching to think that President Trump has committed some kind of crime. And you just heard it. There isn't any crimes. They're trying to keep them off the campaign trail because they want to come up with another steel plan like they did in 2020, or they think that they can stall out President Trump enough to where they can begin to come up with some other kind of weird scheme. But it's all going to backfire, and here's why. All of this is going to produce something, and I'll give you a biblical narrative very quickly. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I said this last night's program. What did it do? They turned up the heat seven times hotter. It caused the fourth man, like unto the Son of God, to appear. Ultimately, the righteous judge, God himself, it gives him a purpose and a mandate to intervene at this time with his justice and his righteousness, and he is. And we're going to see this stuff turn around. And lastly of lasts, I keep saying it, God said like feathers, they're all going to keep falling one by one. So pray for President Trump and do what Jesus said. Keep your faith. Faith, Luke 18, 8, for the justice of God against injustice. Amen. All right. So we're going to keep our faith when we keep going. But the reason why we do this every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and of course the news five days a week is to make sure you are really aware of what's happening. What are this truth? What are the truths? Not your truth or my truth, Rick Green's truth. What is the truth? And that's why we're going to continue to bring you the facts and you can apply the word of God over them for yourself. All right, let's go to the border. Let's talk about this. You know, Ben, I have some of these um, things that you gave us uh, a while back, 
Uh, these are all the IDs at the border. There's the cover of a passport. Uh, I don't know if you guys can get a shot of this stuff. I mean, they're all, all these IDs. Uh, this was just a, a few that you picked up along the way. And there, there are ones here from Mexico. Uh, you know, there's Venezuela. You know, I've got, uh, this one is uh, uh, Congo, Cameroon, um, Brazzaville. I mean, there's crazy. Uh, all the people that are coming across the, across the border, we're seeing now in America the effects of such a wide open border. Let me show you what the Oversight Project uh, posted on X. Breaking flyers distributed at the NGO in Mexico encouraging illegals to vote for President Biden. The flyers yeah. read, reminder to vote for President Biden when you're in the United States. We need another four years of his term to stay open. I mean, like, really? They actually said that, Ben? Yeah, it's not, not surprising at all. But in fact, I was just down there. I was in Reynosa, uh, one city away from uh, Matamoros, where they were distributing those flyers. And it's, it's what we've all come to expect. And, and it's also what you, we were just talking about. It's why they're doing what they're doing to President Trump. Because if they were honest about the direction of our country, if they were honest about what they're doing to our country, the American people would be so outraged, these guys would be in prison. Uh, but this is what you have down there. There's no question about it. They're trying to bring in illegals to vote. They're bringing them in to undermine our country from within. And, and the irony is uh, that they just have the hubris to do it openly, that they would just put these things in toilets, in porter potties, uh, in front of illegals before they cross into the border, as if nobody's going to go down there and expose them for them. And, and I really think, you know, again, kind of given a biblical reference, it's like the, the scales over their eyes. I think that they are so tone deaf to the reality of what, what they're doing and, and the, the impacts and the awakening of the people that they just don't see. How, how bad they really are. And this is the American people are, are getting to finally see this because of our reporting, because of others reporting, because of this and so much more. But no question about it. In fact, one other thing that we just found out in the last couple of weeks that in Wisconsin, the only one state that we know of for sure, but my guess is it's, it's all across the country. They're now allowing, if you don't have an ID, if you have a letter from the uh, Catholic Charities, as if you come in as a homeless person, and you have a letter on letterhead from Catholic Charities saying that, that Catholic Charities is housing you, then that is enough to register you to vote. In Wisconsin, they have same-day voting. So if we don't think that they're going to be trying to steal it again in 2024, we are incredibly naive. There's no question about it. That's what they're going to try to do. Yeah, and, and as we're looking at the B-roll there uh, in the porta potties there, you know, if you think we're lying, look, at, look right here. What is that? That's a Biden... Uh, that's his uh, vote for Biden, you know. I mean, this is, it's so in your face. Uh, it, it's yeah. almost shocking, Rick, you know, what we're seeing. Uh, let me show you what uh, Mike Lee had to say because of what his concern with Mayorkas and the border, and then we'll come right back. Watch. Madam President, I rise today to speak in support of my motion to table the Ramona Manglona nomination. My issue with the nominee at hand uh, is not with the nominee at hand. In fact, she's quite well qualified. She passed out of the Judiciary Committee, on which I serve with my support, by a vote in committee of 21 to 0. The Senate should not be processing nominees right now. The Senate should be laser focused instead on preparing for the trial for Department of Homeland Security Secretary <coughs> Alejandro Mayorkas whom the House impeached in February. Instead of confirming yet another nominee, we should be considering an organizing resolution to set up that trial, which we're constitutionally compelled to conduct. But unfortunately, that's not what we're doing. Instead, Senator Schumer is preparing to enact a nuclear option by tabling the articles of impeachment for the first time in American history. Senate Democrats want to avoid even examining the evidence presented against Mayorkas. We should not be going about business as usual while Senator Schumer prepares to nuke the Senate. If this motion to table is successful, then Manglona, uh, uh, with respect to Manglona, we could move to legislative business to consider an organizing resolution for the impeachment trial. I ask my colleagues for support. And so to that end, Madam President, I, I move to table the nomination of Ramona Villagomez, Mangloma, and ask for the yeas and nays. 
All right, Rick, so here's my question. Why is this such, why is it such a big deal? Why are we, why do we not get anything happening with this, um, with this whole thing with the border and Mayorkas getting impeached? Why are we dragging, is it because we have so many rhinos that are uh, working against us? What's, what's the problem? Gene, I'm I'm uh, I'm thinking about that line in America the Beautiful, liberty in law. People think they're going to get liberty outside the law, just like when they reject God and say, "Oh, I don't want anybody telling me what to do." But then they find bondage and sin when we actually get liberty when we line up with the law of nature and nature's God. In our in our uh, wonderful song there, liberty and law, we celebrate the fact that the reason we have a good system in America is because we have legal standards. We have something we can live by, and everybody's treated the same. I think the reason I'm grieving so much over what's happening to the J6 defendants, over what's happening to Trump, what you just heard Jonathan Turley describe so well, this Frankenstein kind of literally making up the law on the spot, creating a prosecution over something that nobody else is getting prosecuted for, and then ignoring the law, rejecting, literally shredding the Constitution in this case. You heard what Mike Lee said. They've never done this. They've never chosen to not have a trial when the House impeaches. That would be like a grand jury indicting someone locally in your community, and then you call in the, you know, to have the voir dire and the jury and everything on the first day of the trial, and the judge or the jury all together just says, eh, we just decided we're not going to have a trial. Tell the grand jury they can take their indictment, you know, somewhere else. I, I mean, we're literally just undermining the entire judicial system at this point, which leads to chaos, which leads to anarchy, which leads to tyranny. And that's where they really want to go. And I don't mean to make this thing bigger yeah, than sure. it is, but that is what it is. I mean, that's that's why it's such a big deal. But it's also to the point of your question, it's why we get so mad at the Republicans and the rhinos for letting it happen, for not impeaching Joe Biden right now, even if the right. Senate's going to ignore that. I mean, what do we got left, Gene? Seven months? Why yeah. has Joe Biden not been impeached at, the, at this point? Should so I, I think our frustration is growing, but back to what we said earlier, at least it's on display for the American people to see so that maybe enough of them will wake up and say it's got to stop. That's true. All right. So oh, election. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I don't want to leave you there. I don't want to leave you there, man. I say this all the time. Isaiah 126. There is redemption here. And this is what I think Hank would probably say if you toss back to him. There is going to be justice. And Isaiah 126 says we'll be a righteous city again when we have lawyers at the beginning, judges at the first. Go back to like what Solomon was, right. the wisdom of Solomon, bringing that back into the system. And remember that earlier in Isaiah 1, it talks about the princes and everybody and the judges taking mm -hmm. bribes, all the, all the stuff we're seeing now in America. They saw it then. There can be restoration. There can be justice. We got to restore the justice system. Sorry, I meant to say that, and I wanted to get it in there because I want people to be hopeful that we can have those biblical days again. Amen, amen. All right, well, let me show you. But elections do have consequences. Look at what happened in the came ashore in California. Watch this clip. A motorboat speeds ashore at North Carlsbad City Beach around 11 Saturday morning. CBP says at least 15 to 20 migrants jumped out of the boat, with video showing most of them escaping in a waiting SUV that sped away. We need border security for the safety of our residents, and we need it now. This video, along with previous smuggling operations, prompted the mayors of Carlsbad, San Marcos Vista, and the deputy mayor of Oceanside to team up for this press conference, calling for the state and federal governments to secure the border. Chaos at the border, the fact that many of these crossers know there will be no consequences here, encourages this, and it makes our cities less safe. But my real concern is um, human trafficking. What are they bringing in with them? Uh, what drugs, weapons, and who's on the terror watch list that's coming in via boat? Yeah, those are all good questions. Who is it? Now, the thing to, to take from that, Pastor Hank, this is California. They're actually starting to go, hey, wait a minute, we need help. This is not good. What do you think? Well, I think what they're doing, again, hopefully it'll wake them up to realize that there really is a problem, that they need to do something about it. You know, I often say this, Pastor Gene, and I like what Rick said. You, we are in a time that we need to be praying, God, restore the justice. And those of you that might be watching tonight and you're thinking, oh, my God, I'm hearing reports that it's worse. Well, don't forget, I quoted Luke 18 before, will the Son of Man find faith when he returns, faith 
in the justice of God against injustice, but you also have to read the story and realize that a widow dealt with injustice, an unjust judge that didn't regard man or God. Sounds like the Democratic Party, Luke 18. They don't regard God. They're the party of the non-religious affiliation, and they have no regard for man, especially the United States citizens, and they don't really care about this country. But a widow pressed and pressed and pressed and got a breakthrough that ultimately brought and restored justice to Rick's point. But I will say this, I think all of this is, if there is a good thing, what it's doing is it's getting God involved. But it's also starting to wake people up to where they realize that a lot of what is being pushed in our nation is a small minority of numbers of, of special interest groups or those that have an agenda with their socialistic Marxist agendas to try to steal our country, destroy it, and to steal and kill the future for our children. But if we, the majority, will stand up, resist it, and do something, I'm telling you, we will see these things begin to change. But it's when we have coward pastors, we have evangelicals that are the never-Trumpers, and they're willing to look for somebody else, and there isn't one, or go back to the left, then there's a problem. But I'm telling you, Pastor Gene, things are shifting, and I believe they're shifting in such, uh, uh, there's, there's, a, there's an outcry, a righteous rebellion that is saying, you know what, we're not going to take this anymore. And it has to stop. And I think you're going to see something in 2024, towards the end of this year, that's going to reset this country and set us on a new course. But we cannot let up now. We have to continue to stand, and we are going to see the justice and the righteousness of God, I believe, in this time. Amen. Amen. I, I agree with that. And I don't mean to be a downer to everybody. I just, you, everybody needs to understand. I feel like I'm Mike Lindell. Everybody, you, you know, the, we have, we must understand what we're really dealing with. This is what's so, so good about Ben at the border, bringing you fact after fact after fact. Amen. So you understand yeah. it really is this way because we're hearing the exact opposite on the news. So many times you're hearing, what, well, how many times have we seen Mayorkas say, oh, there's no problem. The border's secure. Right. With a straight face. Oh, being impeached, lying to Congress, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, to and we're looking at we're looking at people with boats landing in California. Yeah. And so yeah. anyway. Gene, yes, real ahead. quick, and I want to say this. The reason you need a Ben is because if you go back to Nehemiah, before you could restore the walls, you have to survey the walls. You have to survey the condition right. of the rubble and the garbage that's happening. And so I give my hat, I take, I don't wear hats, Ben, but you do, and I take my hat off to you because it you need to share what is going on so that a process and a plan of restoration can take place in our nation. But if you put your head in the sand, you'll never come to that place of restoration. So we have to have the hard facts, and I appreciate that. Yeah, speaking of Ben, let me show you this. Let me show you this clip of Ben Burkwam at the border. Watch. Lord, we bring La Jolla, Texas PD. We bring all the law enforcement in Texas and across America. We bring them to you. We ask you to lift the burden of the yoke. I pray that you, you'd make that burden light and you would uh, lift them up. Lord, give them joy. Give them peace. Let them know that they're, you're doing, they're doing your work. And I pray that you would protect them. Your warring angels would go before them into this evil battle that we're in. We know this is a battle of not of flesh and blood, but spiritual. And we pray against the principalities and powers of darkness. We bind them. We cast them out of this community, this city, and this valley, and we invite your angels, yourself, your presence, your Holy Spirit into here. Protect them, protect their family, give them divine wisdom, courage, and favor as they face this battle. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, Ben, I mean, that, that was a, a, a great moment, a few moments there that you had there. Uh, talk about the, the, we haven't talked about the Border Patrol enough, and the guys have to deal with this every day. Talk about that, what you're seeing. Yeah, that was, uh, I was actually just with La Jolla, Texas PD for two days last week. Uh, these are the guys that actually, that, that's why the show Law and Border exists. I, I went out with them a couple years ago and I was like, these guys are right on the border. They're right next to McAllen, Texas. Uh, they're on this kind of no man's land uh, in the highways right along the side of the border that's been abandoned. You ask these guys, you saw that Lieutenant Casas right there standing to, to, to my right. Uh, he says he feels like he's been abandoned by Washington, D.C. Uh, now you have agents out there but what's coming out of washington is is abandonment of these communities and so these communities these police officers law enforcement are taking it upon themselves to be the watchmen to, to really stand in the breach 
for our country, and they go out every single day. They, there are cartel members in their community that are running the drugs, that are smuggling the people. They fly drones in right. and watch these guys. They know where they live. They, they go. Uh, these guys are in danger every single day. And so this is what's yeah. happening. It's not just, it's not just you know, what we're seeing illegals come in and the women and children. We are destroying our country from within because of the policies. And these guys are really the heroes me, that, that battle that every day. Yeah, that's right. Let me show you the clip you just mentioned. We've got it. Let me play that real quick about what these guys deal with. Watch. You know, I hate to see it that way, but, you know, sometimes it does feel like we've been abandoned uh, by Washington because they're the ones who are the ones who are able to help us if we need it. And if we don't get the help we need, we still fight. We still do. We're still out here. We're proactive. We're looking for all the illegal activity that has been brought in from the Mexican side. The river is not that far from where we're at right now. And, and of course, yeah, that takes a toll on us, but that doesn't mean we give up. No, it doesn't mean we to give up. All right, Ben, any, before I go to break, I want to have Pastor Hank pray over all these guys, but I, I wanted to give you an opportunity to finish what you were saying about what these guys deal with on a daily basis down there. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a war. It's a battle with the cartels. The cartels uh, have basically taken over that ground. And what we need to do is not just impeach Secretary Marcus and Joe Biden and Secretary Blinken. We need investigations across America into the politicians and people in this country that have sold out to the cartels and sold our country out. And that's, that's what these guys are battling. They are out there on the front lines battling this thing. And it's made worse every single day from Joe Biden. But again, as, as you've heard tonight, I believe... Uh, you look you look biblically uh, when when does God act? He acts when a miracle is needed. He acts when it's beyond our control. And we're in that place now crying out to the Lord saying, Lord, we need you. And I believe he's going to act in this time. And I I pray that over those men that that operate down there in that hell. And I pray that over our nation as well. Amen. All right. Pastor Hank, lead us in that prayer. And I just want to say this, the border agents, I watched them change baby diapers when I had an all access tour down there and they had threats against their families. They really are putting their life on the line. Heavenly Father, we come to you, the throne of the Most High God, and we pray for your grace, your mercy and your help for these that are on the border, these border agents. We pray a supernatural protection, preservation that would come over them, upon them, to them, for them, and not just for them, but God, for their loved ones, their homes, their property, their possessions. We pray that you, God, would reach out with the spirit of strength and power, that they would not give up God, because we need them. And I pray that you would encourage them and strengthen them and protect them. And I pray also, 2 Samuel 5, 20, there was a time when it looked like the enemy was prevailing, but God, you gave a sign unto Israel that day. And 2 Samuel 5 said, you broke through upon the enemy. And it was like water that broke forth through a dam. And the place was named Baal Perizim, the Lord of the breakthrough. So we prophesied and we declare over our border that you would prevail over those who desire to come to steal, kill, and destroy in this country, and you would refrain them and restrain them, that the innocent would not be harmed, and our border agents, God, would not be discouraged or harmed. And lastly, I pray that we will see the Lord of the breakthrough over the border, but over this country. Give us relief, God, and I pray that your holy angels would be accessed now to bring about restraint and to bring about order. Restore it now, as Nehemiah did, the rebuilding of the walls. We pray that our borders would be closed and restored at this time. And I thank you that what we see shall not be permanent. And there is a plan, Father, to restore order to the border in Yeshua's name. Amen. But here's the problem. We can't become weak. We have to rise up strong. And I think of that scripture uh, that talks about when the enemy comes in. Like a flood, the Lord raises up a standard. And I think like a flood, we the people need to raise up a standard that restores order back to our country, morality back to our country. And if enough of us will do it in righteousness, and I'm not talking about violence, but I'm talking about standing for what is our God-given citizen rights, constitutional rights in our country, we will push back and this nonsense will be absolutely brought into divine order. Amen. All right, we're less than just a few minutes out. I want to give you guys a chance to wrap up. I'll let you go first, Ben. You got a minute to wrap it up. Final thoughts. 
Well, the reason I exist and, uh, well, God's purpose in my life, obviously, there's a lot of reasons I exist, but uh, the reason from a media standpoint I exist and we exist and I believe Victory News exists uh, is because the media, the mainstream media has been derelict in their duty. We didn't talk enough about their problems and the reason that we're in this position, but uh, that's a big part of it. And, and we are filling that gap. We are standing in that gap. And I, I believe uh, victory is ours if we do. God is looking for uh, a generation of people for such a time as this to stand in the gap. He looked for it in the past, and, and he found no one. And I pray that he finds us and uh, that he uses us to restore this nation. I just want to say a very great thank you to Flashpoint, because Flashpoint has really been a catalyst, a true movement that God brought forward right during the pandemic, before it, during it, all of it. And many people have been sparked and inspired by the way Gene Bailey and the leadership here begins to speak the truth in the middle of a kind of a dark culture. But I got to tell you, Flashpoint has created a light in Goshen. It might be dark in Egypt, but it was light in Goshen. And let me say this also. So many broadcasters have kind of found themselves following in the wake of this movement because it is a movement and God is calling people to stand up at this time. This is a modern day prophetic movement. It's a word from the Lord. And I wanna encourage everybody who can to follow this, to stand with it, support Gene Bailey, become part of the Flashpoint Army. And I wanna say a huge thank you to all of you that make this possible by standing with this awesome broadcast. Register today at 2024flashpoint.live.